I'm here with Laura Turner. Laura, thank you, thank you very much for, for joining me today. Um, we're going to have a little quick chat about the World Championship. We've, we've already discussed you spent quite a lot of time there this year as a, as a commentator, definitely more than last year. Um, how much did you enjoy being on the commentary scene pretty much as a, a full-time role this time? Yeah, that no, was, was fantastic. Obviously, got treated to some excellent darts, some wonderful stories along the way. Um, but yeah, it was quite nice to kind of get out of the house, do something that felt a bit more normal as well, especially considering the circumstances. So yeah, it was a good experience. Do you think it was a lot easier than it was 12 months ago? Because you've had experience of not just the Worlds, but, but different major tournaments on Sky as well now. Yeah, I think it's definitely something I'm kind of getting into a bit more, you know, practice makes perfect and obviously you know got a lot more practicing to do to, to get you know to get that level up but uh, yeah I think uh, I felt more comfortable obviously I kind of knew what what to expect and you know being crowdless it's a bit unusual but uh, it, there's a fab team at Sky that kind of help you out and if you've got any questions queries worries you know everyone just works together to kind of get the best out of each other so mm. yeah I, don't, I think much I felt more comfortable this year too. Yeah we, we spoke to quite a lot of the players about what it's like without a crowd and there are some players that think it's it's easier to play without a crowd. There's some that obviously thrive off it, like Nathan Aspen or Gerwin Price. But is there any sort of effect as a, a pundit or a commentator of not having people in the arena? I'll be honest, when they changed the stage setting, it yeah. looked fantastic where it was sat like central with the, with the dartboard and the stage behind us. But just before the players were coming on, they are right next to you. I think there's this, there's this video going around of me kind of trying to whisper who I thought may win the next match so the players couldn't actually come along and hear us. Um, but yeah, actually, you know, in terms of atmosphere, you know, there, there is essentially none other than what the dark players create. Um, but there were definitely games this year that I thought, it, the, you forgot that there was no crowd there. I mean, like MVG and Joe Cullen was... Um, absolutely fantastic you just kind of got so wrapped up into the game um so it, it does make a difference it makes a difference to everyone and i'm sure it makes a difference to the viewers at home as well because you know the crowd the crowd and the reactions sometimes kind of are what make are what make the world championships what they are but um yeah you just kind of have to get on with it do what you can and yeah i think i think overall the standard of play kind of outshone any kind of negativity anyway yeah, I think especially when you got into the, the post-Christmas darts, there was some amazing matches and everybody was really keeping up the stand. I think maybe pre-Christmas, there were a few games where you could say the standard maybe wasn't quite there, but you look post-Christmas and every match you, you had to keep an eye on, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, quarterfinals days, kind of, as, a, as a spectator normally, that's my favourite day to watch. I love quarterfinals days. To actually be there and be part of it was brilliant. Um, but like you say, the standard from, from then onwards and, you know, like you say, several games beforehand, but the standard from, from after Christmas was superb. I think you just got absolutely just drawn into every single match. So, yeah, it was a, it was a different World Championships, but I think nonetheless, it was still quite an exciting one. Yeah, I tend to agree with you there. Um, and I'm going to be asking people to, to pick out their favourite moment from the World Championship. Um, there are a lot of moments you, you could pick out, I'm sure, but... Could you narrow it down to, to two or three, maybe? Yeah, I, I got asked my moment of the first round, and I, and I still can't forget it. And that, I think that's what makes the moment. But I absolutely love Dmitry Korpinov's walk-on. Oh. I'd never seen him before. I hadn't heard of him before. But this kind of he exuded confidence, you know, and he just danced his way up there. But I think also he carried that on. And when he won a set, and he was just like pointing at the dartboard, and like, yeah. It was just, honestly, the whole thing was brilliant. Um, but that aside, I still, I think the MBG Cullen game, just the way that both of them played, it was absolutely, as Michael would say, phenomenal. <laughs> it really, really was. And um, yeah, I, I enjoyed that from start to finish. I was actually at home watching that. And I was trying to have a practice myself with my other half. And both of us just gave up in the end. We were like, there's another 180. There's another 180. So we just gave up playing and started, just sat down and watched the rest of it. What's the experience like watching at home when you've, when you've been in the studio for, for quite a lot of the games? Yeah, it's, it's kind of just a bit of you know the old normality if you know what I mean mm. you kind of I almost forget that I've been there I know that sounds really strange but then all of a sudden my voice will pop up or something and I'll go oh 
that's me. <laughs> it's still really kind of surreal that I get to do that. You know, I know how lucky I am to have that experience and to be able to go up there and put my thoughts and, you know, put my voice to, to some epic matches that we've seen. So I know I'm lucky to do that, but to come home as well and share the experience. My, my kids love the darts and it was like, go to bed kids. And they're like, well, can't I just watch the end of this match? And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we, we kind of all watch it as a family, but uh, it's it's just nice to come back and and do that with the, with the family as well. Yeah, yeah. And of course, we saw Dita Herman and Lisa Ashton back in the World Championships. Um, two very good performances. Dita was probably a little bit unlucky against Andy Bolton, and well, Lisa was extremely unlucky against against Adam Hunt. They both put up really really good fights. Um, how proud were you to see both players putting such a good performance on the Ali Pali stage? Yeah, I said it. Um, Absolutely. I think they did themselves, both did themselves proud. I think Dita was probably a little bit disappointed um, in the, it just in so much as I think it, she didn't get going from mm -hmm. the off. That, that first leg, I think it was five or six missed uh, leg darts. Yeah. I think if that, she got that under her belt earlier on, then I think she would have run away, you know, not run away with it, but she would have, that, that level would have been able, she would have been able to keep it up. Yeah. Um, so it took her it took her a couple of sets to get get into it and then it's very difficult to kind of fight back when you're when you're a couple of sets down lisa just what what i've come to expect is when i see lisa on the stage now um i'm just again gutted for her more than anything that she still hasn't got that elusive kind of stage-based win under her belt she's beaten so many good players on the tour along the way including adam hunt she's beaten him twice on the tour but i i will say that adam hunt has become a vastly improved player over like the grand slam and then what we've seen of his performance here at the Worlds, I think he's played really, really well, much, much stronger. So he's obviously another one to watch in terms of his, his confidence and the way that he's now taking like, floor games up to the stage. And it, it's like anything, yeah, the more experience these players get playing at, at the level, you know, on, in front of the cameras, with the lights on them, with normally with a crowd watching, etc. the more experience that they get at that, then there's the more confidence that they should, they should get to play at that level. Yeah, with Lisa as well, you, you feel like it's just one millimetre away from, from getting over the line and, and being able to get that win. And you, you feel if she, if she does get that win, there's some huge opportun opportunities for her because you've seen her do it on the, on the Pro Tour. She's come so close in the world. And obviously, she's a former multiple-time world champion in, in the BDO as well, isn't she? So. Yeah, and I think I think for Lisa, it's that kind of it's that thing that she needs to get past. You know, she needs to get that win under her belt. It hasn't mm -hmm. happened yet. Four one up against Christopher Tyson at the Grand Slam, and Christoph then comes back with, I think his four legs were something like a hundred and fifteen average or something to actually beat her. And actually, all three averages that you know, Michael Smith um, and I can't remember who the other one was at the Grand Slam, but oh, um, Jose de Souza. Jose, yeah. Yeah, 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 all exactly. three players. Yeah, all three players had over hundred average to beat her. You know, and it's like they know how they got to perform and play well to beat Lisa, and Lisa knows that she's going to have to do the same. But it's just, I think, the longer it goes on, you think, oh, come on, we're, we're, you know, we're all hoping for it to happen for her. You, you just, as soon as she gets it, I think then that's just some one less thing she's got to worry about. She's still possibly going up there thinking, right, this is now, right now, I'm going to do it. Once it's done then she, she should be able to play with a lot more freedom and hopefully we'll see a lot more, you know, wins along the way for her. Yeah, 100%. It's just one away and then she'll she'll get the ball rolling and start performing really well on TV. Well, getting the results on TV, I should say. Um, just touching on on yourself and obviously we know you're a, a keen darts player, especially during the BDO system over the past, past few years. What is 2021 going to be like for you in the darts scene? Are we going to see you playing at all? Well, I bought a diary. I think that was a bit optimistic. <laughs> I, bought, <laughs> I bought a diary. Um, I do know the WDF obviously have got the uh, World Masters in Holland at the tail end of 2021. Um, because of my results early on last year, I, I lost in the final of the Slovakian Open to Lorraine Wynne Stanley. That then puts me in the upcoming World Masters. So I think the only definitive thing I can say is I'm hope I, I should be there if the world is open. <laughs> But uh, in terms of other tournaments, I can see that you know, it's very hard for organisations. I can see them all trying to plan and put competitions down into place, but they just get, get kept, keep getting pushed back and back. So at the moment, I've decided not to plan for anything <laughs> um, and just wait for the world to open. Just lots of online darts. So I'm lucky that I've got a natural practice partner in, in my husband, Aaron. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, so I, I, I do get to play an actual person sometimes <laughs> as opposed to just people over the internet, which is helpful. But uh, yeah, just, just keep practicing and just hopefully something will happen perhaps by, by Easter time. I don't know if that's optimistic, but uh, I'm hoping <laughs> at least by Easter some kind of level of amateur darts and we'll, we'll come, we'll, we'll start back up again, get yeah. back down our local club, start some local leagues, you know, work from the bottom upwards really. Hopefully, hopefully. And you mentioned your kids have been watching the, the PDC World Championship. Have they been on the board recently? Yes, we did have a very epic, uh, epic battle. Um, my youngest daughter won a, a few weeks back in a best of three against my eldest daughter. And uh, yeah, no, the, my, uh, they had another rematch, which then went to my eldest daughter. So it's one all. It's one all in the house. Um, there's, there's a prestigious wooden spoon that gets passed between the losers. <laughs> okay. How, how far off are they taking t from taking you on then? Uh, they're, they're a little way off, but you know, but the, the key thing is they enjoy it, to be honest. They enjoy it. I say they're a little way off. I mean, you've seen me try and hit double one at times and that, that can take a while. So, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I, the key thing is they enjoy it. They're, they're, you know, I'm not going to push them into doing it or, you know, if, if they want to. My eldest is definitely more into it. She was, she was playing for Surrey Youth prior to, to the lockdown. So hopefully she'll pick that back up. And uh, yeah, it's just a shame. I think there's so many good things out there for youth players at the moment, which just can't be utilised as well as what they have been with the youth academies, the JDC, you've got uh, England who were doing their Grand Prix. Everything's just put on hold. So I'm hopeful that the you know the the youth don't lose interest but uh, there is that niggling worry isn't there in the back of your head that uh, not doing it for such a long time it's um it's whether they want to hopefully they're all raring to go and just want to get straight back to it but uh, yeah you do worry that uh, they might lose a bit of interest as well so fingers crossed we can just start playing again soon <laughs> yeah, yeah i know completely what you mean um and we saw the the women's tour last year the women's series sorry um late last year something that you performed well in and there were some excellent performances from, from many of the players there. Are you looking forward to hopefully seeing, obviously we don't know what the world's like at the moment, um, later in the year hopefully seeing some more of those women's tour tournaments and, and maybe more women oh, in the I, world I, championships? Yeah, I really hope so. I mean, I don't really know, like, like you said, I don't really know what is in store for it. I think the women's series work better than a one-off qualifier. Um, yeah. I know I, I saw interviews that Barry Hearn said he wasn't overly happy with the numbers, but I still think kind of upwards of 80 women in the midst of a quite a serious pandemic, you know, we didn't have a very, we didn't have a huge amount of overseas players coming in, for example. Um, I'm hopeful that perhaps going forward that there would be more women that were interested in, in it. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I absolutely loved it. I, I think I say I didn't do very well until the actual very last tournament I made a semi-final, but um, yeah, I would like to see two or three of them kind of put throughout the year with obviously the prize being potentially, you know, place in the world, place in the Grand Slam like they've done. It just gives players the time to settle in. It's such a new and professional kind of environment that you're playing in. It's very structured, which is fantastic. I, I enjoyed it. But even, even going down to, say, like using Dark Connect, where absolutely every single throw is recorded. There's a point that I'm going, oh, everyone can see, you're not playing very well, and the whole world can see how I'm playing at the moment. And I then, I personally tended to lose a bit of focus and was focusing on that as opposed to the match. And it's, okay. it's just kind of getting used to it, and that, 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 kind of, that kind of environment. But uh, the more, again, the more that we can do that kind of thing, then the better the, better the standard will be. And hopefully it will drive more women to come and play darts. Mm. That's the key thing, getting more women involved, getting more women playing darts. The standard will just go up. I, I'm confident of that. You know, this additional visibility where you've, this year you had Lisa and Yadita and obviously what Fallon did the year before. This will all only kind of increase the interest. That's, that's, that's how I see it. And more women will take up the sport. That, that's my hope anyway. Yeah, and you've seen that exact model with the likes of the development tour. I mean, the numbers now on the development tour are absolutely huge. I went to one a couple of years ago and it was absolutely packed in, in Wigan. Um, do you think it's the same sort of thing that the PDC will have in mind, trying to get them to work alongside things like development tour and challenge tour? Yeah, I, I hope so. Again, I know there's arguments, obviously, 
at the top top end, say like what Lisa's doing, you know, your ultimate goal for, for a, a dark player is to play in the one two eight is, is to get onto the Pro Tour. As, but in, in the same way that say we've got um, CDC in Canada and Mar North America, and you've got like an Australian tour, you've got different geographical areas that are looked after. You've got age demographics in the development tour, and obviously there's the affiliation with the JDC. Personally, I don't see that the women should be any different. I think it's an underdeveloped area of darts. It's the last underdeveloped area of darts, in my opinion. It's the one that's been overlooked the most. Yes, women can go in and we can go and play challenge tour or we can go and play in the one two eight if we you know if we're good enough to qualify for that. But I think as a an entity as a whole, women still need something for them to get better with it, you know, to, to actually build up within playing with each other because otherwise you're just, you know, there's a potential there to get kind of beaten week in, week out. And unfortunately, other than say maybe 10, 20 women in the world, that, that's, a, that's a likelihood. And women will just lose interest. So I think they need to be looked after as a group in themselves. And then the ultimate goal is obviously to then progress within, within Challenge Tour or within, then move up to the, the 128. That's what I would like. Whether I get it or not is a different matter, but that's, that's what I think would work the best. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time, Laura. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Cheers, Josh. <laughs>